the amount of carbon dioxide in the room you're in, which I guess is determined by how well ventilated it is, has a relationship with how much recycled air I take in. How? Absolutely. And this, I learned all this after the book came out. I was talking to a pulmonologist who said, you really need to look into indoor CO2. I said, well, why? He said, that is a good uh, way of determining how much of that air has been recycled. So I bought one of these, which is a carbon dioxide meter. And I've been recording our CO2 during this interview. Jesus. And um, so um, if you are outside it's about 418, depends where you are, 418, 19 parts per million CO2. That's healthy, right? Even though CO2 is going up, it's causing climate change. We all know that. But for breathing, that is perfectly healthy. Once you get into 800 parts per million, some studies have found that... <laughs> Sorry, it's going when up. When they are testing people, when they're testing students, you see a 20% decline in test results just from 800. By the time you get to 1000, you start suffering from things like eye irritation, sore throats, other issues. So we're probably breathing in every one in every 30 breaths that I'm breathing in is your breath or the cameraman's breath. By the time you get to 2500, you're in really bad shape. One in every 17 breaths is, is a breath you're breathing from somebody else. So we have been told by authorities that we should only worry about levels that are up to 5,000 parts per million. That is completely false. There are over 18 studies that show levels over 800 into 1,000 can potentially cause problems with bone demineralization, uh, kidney calcification, and chronic inflammation. And so just since we've been sitting in this interview, we started off at 700, and now we're at 1,100. And if we were to continue working in here for the next few hours, this could be up to 1,500, 1,700, which has been shown to have serious uh, issues with, with cognitive function and with physical function. That's very scary. And it, it's cause for a redesign of this studio because, I mean, putting on the air conditioning, would that help? Because that would... That, that would no, it's recycling the same air unless that air is, is coming in from outside. Does they, that air come from outside? I don't think so. I think it's recycled. And uh, a really scary study I read was a lot of schools are at 1,500 to 2,000. Um, several studies have found this. They have shown a 50% dec decrease in test results when students were exposed to air with that much CO2 in it. 50% decrease in test results from 1,500 to 2,000. I've recorded levels up to 4,000 and 5,000 in bars and subways and more. Jesus. Yeah, this isn't my uh, hypothesis either. This is something I was told about about a year after the book came out. And I've seen a lot of scientific studies since. And I sent some of those to your team just to show that this isn't something I'm making up. The the ones you sent to my team, I I have um, some notes here I can pull up. Um, in one study of 24 employees, cognitive scores were 50% lower when the participants were exposed to 1,400 ppm of CO2 compared with 550 ppm during a working day. We're nearly there. <laughs> so I am 50% dumber because you've been breathing so much. <laughs> I start to, uh, and I rec highly recommend nobody get one of these Why? because you go crazy wherever really? you are. On an airplane, I've uh, seen 2,700 really? parts per million. And you wonder why you feel like crap after a long flight. And sometimes it goes up and then it comes down because they put in more oxygen. But usually when the plane is warming up, it's 25, 2600, which is why a lot of people just immediately go to sleep. You know, I think maybe they're doing it on purpose to mellow everyone out. But if you think about cognitive function, I mean, this is a 50% decrease it's, in test results is insane. And to think you have kids in these schools taking tests to go into college and all of the air is recycled... I mean, it's just, when I mentioned at the beginning of our chat here, 
that the modern world is conspiring to make us unhealthy. I think this is an example. And from what I've seen, very few people are paying any attention to this. And it's real. You're reading the scientific studies over there. This isn't stuff that I'm feeding to you. It's, it almost sounds like I'm smoking. It sounds like I'm inhaling, you know, because we talk about people have got to smoke outside to keep mm -hmm. us healthy. So we change the laws in this country so you can't smoke indoors. Mm-hmm. Well, at least smoking is fun and it gives you a buzz, right? <laughs> CO2 is, you can't smell it. It's really hard to sense it. It's invisible. And yet it's always there. Any outside environment, you don't have to worry about it. But indoor environments, especially in the buildings we've created now, they don't have windows. I can't tell you how many hotels, sometimes really nice hotels, I go to open the windows. My God, they've glued the windows shut right? Mm. And overnight, I watched this just ticking up 100 points every couple Jeez. hours. <laughs> and you wonder why you wake up so feeling so much worse than you did when you first came in there. So this is, this is real stuff. And in a room like this, there's nothing you can do because the HVAC system has been designed to just recycle the air over and over and over again. My hunch, and I'm probably wrong about this, in the next few years, people are going to start requiring, uh, bosses of companies are going to require that there be fresh air for their employees because I think you're going to see big problems with performance. I mean, even just sitting here, now that you know this. I feel tired. You feel <laughs> Some of that's a placebo effect, sure, but, I feel great but you said don't it. you like, feel whoa. a little like warm and tired? So, yeah. so take my word for it. Do not travel with one of these. It will make you a complete neurotic. I'm doing it because I want to document it. I'm going to be updating future editions of the book with some of this information because I didn't know about this when the book came out. But I think people really need to know about this and start asking hotels, can I open the window? Start out before you rent an office, can I open the window? Like it's that easy. You just need to open it a little bit. It mm. makes a huge difference just opening it a little bit. People can't see this, but we sit in a room here and we like air seal it for sound reasons. Yeah. So we don't have any windows in here. Um, and we actually move this. This is a replica of my old kitchen, which is on the top floor of this building. So we, the reason which had this wonderful, huge balcony over there that you could open the mm. whole side of the, 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 um, that side of the building and walk outside into the fresh air. Mm. But we moved it down here and made, made this little chamber because of sound reasons. I do sit in here for sometimes nine hours a day. So there's been an occasion a few times where I've done three podcasts in a day. And I feel that now you've said it, I <laughs> do fat feel incredibly fatigued. I'm sure it's because I'm talking and, you know, having really, you know, sort of challenging my brain a little bit, but I, I only, I can only wonder if the studies are correct and there's a 50% variance in my cognitive scores, what would happen if I found a way to get oxygen into this room? More oxygen in the carbon dioxide out. I promise you'd feel better. I'm going to figure out how, how to much do that. better. Who knows? Yeah. It depends on the day, depends on the person. I promise you'd feel better. I promise your brain would be operating and functioning better than it is now. We're not meant to be in four white walls trapped inside, are we? And this is the Never. misalignment problem. Never. This is that misalignment problem. Even a hundred years ago, right? Every building had windows that you could open. Even 50 years ago, every build, almost every building had, had windows you could open. But, but now the standard protocol is because it's easier to heat and easier to cool, right? You're creating this, this bubble, which is why if you go into like a Walmart, one of those stores, there's no windows, there's no anything. You just got blue light in this bubble. You can control the, the environment much more easily. But what is it doing to people's health? You know, uh, so this is, I'm the guy that asks for a hotel room, does it have a window? And you get really funny looks until you start traveling with one of these and start reading these studies and you realize how important it is. So interesting. One of the things that, I, that I've really taken from this is when I wrote my book, um, I always go to the jungle to write. I literally mm -hmm. write the book in nature. I've just realized that I'm actually increasing my cognitive um, performance by going and sitting down by a lake every year and writing versus doing it inside an office. So when I reflect on tasks that require real cognitive performance, honestly, like having an interview conversation 
or writing a book or any sort of deep sort of intellectual cognitive tasks, it's so important that those rooms and those spaces are well ventilated. Or else, and, and the right light. And so the those, right light, those, yeah. those two things, I think, are very important. And I think we're going to see st- so much of this changing in our culture soon because people are going to ask for it and they're going to feel the difference. So there's a whole bunch of different reasons why you're thinking more clearly. It's not just the lack of CO2, right, in the environment. It's the natural light. Your nature itself is just so inspiring yeah. and relaxing. But this is one component of it, without a doubt. I'm shocked that nobody has ever told me this before. I've never Sorry heard about that. No, but Ignorance never... is bliss. Like if yeah, I hadn't I know, done this, but... we'd, we'd both feel energized and ready to roll. But I'm the type of person that would rather be empowered by information. I like when people turn the lights on because we go through our lives um, misdiagnosing the problems we're dealing with. And so for mm-hmm. me, knowledge is power because of course I've sat in this chair for you know a long time and to know that there's a potential to potentially increase my cognitive performance when I'm doing a com- conversation just by finding a way to get oxygen into this room is is profound. W- without a doubt. It's a profound I, advantage. I, I ensure that that will happen. This is the most crazy stat you'll ever hear. 93.3% of you that watch this channel frequently haven't yet hit the subscribe button. So if you liked this clip and if you like what we do here, please can you do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. And in return, I promise you, I will do everything I can from now until forever to make this channel better and better and better. Thank you.